How's it going everybody? My name is John Hammond. Welcome back to another YouTube video. Listen, I've been recording for like eight hours so far. Uh, this has kind of been a little bit of a marathon streak, trying to churn out some of these videos. And uh, my my light up there to get the little top glisten is has, has died. The battery's dead. So um, <laughs> we're doing this video in dark mode. Hope that's cool with y'all. Um, I know everyone's all gung-ho about dark mode anyway. So uh, let's see how we do. Let's have some fun with it. Uh, I'm going to hop over to my computer screen here. We're still taking a look at the Hack the Box Cyber Apocalypse Capture the Flag. And in this challenge, in this video, in this thing that we're doing, I'm going to be checking out the cryptography category. This is a challenge named Phase Stream 3, which was one of the challenges that uh, they said was really well received and people liked it. So I don't know, it was on the list for me to showcase. So here we go. The description here, the aliens have learned the stupidity of their misunderstanding of Kirchhoff's principle. Now they're going to use a well-known stream cipher AES in CTR mode with a strong key. And they'll happily give us the poor humans the source because they're so confident it's secure. Incredible. Uh, there is no Docker instance for me to spin up and actually interact with. So we'll just download the files here. I'll go ahead and grab that. And uh, let's make a directory where we're working. We'll call this PS3. Let's move into PS3. Let's go ahead and move that, uh, what is it, crypto PS3? Yeah. <laughs> Grab that zip file, go ahead and unzip it. And uh, we've got a couple files here. We have the phase stream 3.py that is this. Um, looks like we have a Python script using some of the libraries, kind of part of Python's kind of cryptography modules there. We can work with AES or the advanced encryption standard, a counter here, and importing from OS so we can get dev view random and a decent source of randomness. We have a strong key that's being used here and the encryption method or that function here will take in plain text as an argument. It will define an AES algorithm for us to use in CTR mode with a counter and we'll encrypt the plain text and return out the ciphertext. It looks like this uses a test string here that says no right of private conversation was enumerated in the Constitution. I don't suppose to blah, blah, blah. So, good enough. It will go ahead and display, print out that encrypted test method, which is peculiar. Uh, then we also have the flag.txt being read in, that file uh, open on the server side. We don't actually have a copy of that file, of course, but it is read in and then encrypted, also displayed out. So this looks like a pretty classic cookie cutter vanilla implementation usage of AES in CTR mode. Now, uh, I, for one, am not too smart in cryptography. If I do anything with AES for a challenge, I tend to work through AES ECB, the electronic codebook methodology, where uh, how you encrypt each block in this so that sort of cipher is done in the exact same way. So uh, each block is encrypted in the same way. And that can be used and abused in some peculiar cases. But with CTR uh, and using other more advanced or more complex portions of AES that aren't so immediately recognizably insecure, maybe there's not something immediately weak that we can recognize. And I wouldn't see anything off the bat just seeing how this is used and how this is done in this code. But if we go take a look at the other file that we're given here, we do have output. And output is peculiar and interesting because it looks like, if I actually open this up in a text editor, we have two lines here. Now that makes sense, right? Given we printed out the encrypted portion of the test and the encrypted portion of the flag, but that means that we have some very valuable pieces of information here because the way that AES is going to work in the stream cipher is that sure, it'll do some XOR magic and math and stuff that obviously is much more cryptographically secure than just XOR on its own. Uh, but the gimmick is that you need to end up using a key only once sort of thing. Like that should not be reused. But in this case, that key was used to encrypt the plain text of the test method that we see and the plain text of the flag. So we have a couple pieces here where we have the plain text known to us of this test string and its encrypted rendition, and we have the encrypted portion of the flag. So we could do some magic with that XOR operation 
and potentially determine the plain text of the flag because that key has been reused. All we kind of need to do is take the encrypted portions, XOR them together, and then XOR it with XOR that evaluated process with this plain text of the test string. That's it. That that makes this significantly easier, right? We don't have to worry a ton about AES in CTR mode. We've basically boiled this down to just XOR, all because that key has been reused. And that is totally reversible and something we can absolutely do here. So let's make this, I don't know, something that we could do. I will go ahead and uh, create an attempt.py script. Let's uh, go ahead and make that shebang lang. User bin environment Python. Uh, let's go ahead and open, I suppose, that output.txt file. Yeah? So we'll do a with open as h, so you can use a context manager. We'll do an h.readline. That can be, um, what is that? Encrypted test. Yeah? And then the fault line following that will be encrypted flag, right? So if I were to print out, oof, this encrypted test and the encrypted flag, we could just see them out on the screen here. I'll actually use an F string with that. So it displays it out and kind of shows it with the variable included and the variable name. And we gotta be sure to close those strings there. But now simply running that Python three attempt.py, there's that. <laughs> There are our, our variables. Looks like we need to strip out these new line characters. That won't be too bad. So let's go ahead and strip and do the same on the other one, strip. But if this is in hex, right, we want the actual data. We want the actual bytes. It, it's represented right now in hexadecimal, but we want to know what the legitimate raw value is. So we're going to go ahead and decode that from hex. I'll import bin ASCII so I can do that. Uh, we'll go ahead and actually just, I guess, decode them as we read them in. So I'll use bin, ha bin ASCII on Hexlify. And we'll do the same for the encrypted flag. Nice and easy. Now we have the raw bytes. And now we kind of want to XOR those together, right? for the magic cookbook of being able to recover because of the fact that this key has been reused for both the test string and the actual string that we wanna keep safe and secure. We don't want folks to know the flag. That's the challenge here. I'm gonna end up using the XOR function from Pwn Tools. Uh, so I'll go ahead and from Pwn <laughs> import XOR. And we'll go ahead and try and XOR these. So we'll have some blob equal the XOR of encrypted test and encrypted flag. So at that point, we can display out our blob and see how that looks. There's just that data. But now we wanna go ahead and actually XOR that with our known test string, right? So let's grab that and let's put that back in this file. I'll turn on word wrap so I'm not flying around all as much. But let's go ahead and now print out, I guess let's define an actual flag for one thing, your decrypted flag, right? And that can go ahead and be XOR of our blob with the original test string, yeah? So let's go ahead and print out an F string of that. And let's see if this challenge is really just that easy. Looks like it is. <laughs> Uh, I XORed more than I really needed to because we took the entire test string. Uh, we really only need kind of the length of what the encrypted flag would have been. Uh, we could actually probably do that. If we were to take test up to the length of the encrypted flag, which has been decoded, that stream should give us the same right amount of data there. Um, did I go too far? Maybe. Maybe. Encrypted flag, should be that. Let's verify encrypted flag. I realize I've already solved the challenge and this is just kind of like experimental, but I like to do that. 
Yeah, encrypted flag is significantly shorter. What happened? <laughs> oh, test at that index isn't all that helpful. Yeah. What if we took that to the length of the encrypted flag? Maybe that's kind of what I'm going to get up doing. Because blob is going to be long anyway because we've XORed it with the entire uh, test portion. So I think we need to slice it after it has been XORed. I'm still being Dumbo. How am I still Dumbo? Oh, I did encrypted test. I did, should have been encrypted flag. And my face was in the way all the time, so you, you didn't even see the error. I had typed an encrypted test here when it should have been encrypted flag. Look, guys, it's like 2.30 in the morning. <laughs> Someone please stop me from recording videos. <laughs> That's it. That's that challenge. Literally AES CTR mode. Look, we made that some way too easy when we boil it down to just XOR, all because of that reused key uh, for the same encryption just on the test string, and we were able to see both the plain text and the encrypted portion of that test string. That's the weakness just right there. Dunzo, there's our flag. Let's go ahead and submit it, and we'll wrap this video up. Maybe I should go to bed. <laughs> Reused key attack. All done. That's it. That's all. That's all she wrote. That's the end of this dark mode video, everybody. Let's turn off all the lights. Let me just, let me see. Let me see. So you know that let's let's have some fun now that the video is over. You know how uh, I have the lights going on between the cheesy lights over in the back, uh, and we also have the floodlights that are right beside. So if I were to use my cellular device here and I opened up the light application, uh, I can kind of control the lights and the colors as to what's going on. So super dark mode, right? Uh, let's just turn them all off, yeah? Now it just looks kind of dull and gross. Uh, maybe if I were to turn off that light way up there, there's another one that's kind of coming on this side. So forgive me, you're gonna like, stand by, stand by, it's cool. Dark mode, bros, bros. Your life should be in dark mode. Everyone loves dark mode. Why aren't you using dark mode, John? God, this is like epileptic now. Turn the video off. Stop watching, everybody. Thanks so much for hanging out with me. I hope you appreciated this video, and we gotta go. Let's call it a night. Let's call it a night. Thanks, everybody. Bye bye.